Right here would be administration offices and art wing. And then this building is actually the second level that goes on top here. And that's to maintain the sixth grade school within a school concept. So this would be just for the sixth grade students. And again, we have two brand new science labs. The blue are classroom spaces, and the pink are special education classrooms. So that's the middle school layout. Can you go back just one? In this, this purple area right there is a courtyard that is housed in between the two science labs in the seventh and eighth grade. So this space is what the purple would look like. It would be an extremely valuable collaboration space, a, a fallout space for project-based learning for not just the science classrooms, but as the superintendent Willis mentioned, for interdisciplinary uh, projects for classroom teachers to be able to work together and have the students be able to have space to expand and not be limited by a traditional classroom. And this is again what Mr. Bernard had showed you, the core facilities over here have, is the middle school. This is the main street, the gymnasium, the shared uh, cafeteria with separate dining facilities. The middle school would be dining here, and the high school would be dining there. The auditorium, which would seat over 600 students, larger than this one, and then the library and media center. So the, the next several slides are going to be dedicated to the shared core. Um, again, these are spaces that both middle school students and high school students would be using. So this is just a little bit more detail here. It's, um, I'd like to call your attention for the, for the gymnasium here. Uh, there's one competition basketball court. So again, if, if you can visualize, this is the main street car here. We would come in actually with an entrance here. Gymnasium would be right on the left as you came in from the parking lot here. This is an area where the competition basketball court would be housed. This is uh, for all of our formal uh, varsity level uh, and junior varsity level basketball games. But the space can also be uh, used in, in a multi-purpose way. Um, essentially, there will be um, petitions that can be formed in the gymnasium that would allow us, while that competition court is running here vertically, there is the ability to run two uh, basketball games simultaneously with a partition. Again, if the spaces are shared by the middle school and high school students, this would be an opportunity for classes to be held at the same time, uh, make, maximizing the use of this space, but at the same time, making them distinct from each other. So again, this is just an overlay here of the competition court. You can see a little bit of a shadowed area of those two other courts here. And then in this space, these are spaces that we do not currently have uh, in either building. For those of you that might not be able to read, this says weights and fitness, and this, this says phys ed alternatives. Weights and fitness is just that. It's a weight and fitness room, something that we do not even remotely come close to um, in a high school or middle school facility currently. There's a space for the athletic trainer, the athletic director, um, and his secretary in this area, and one health instructor office. Um, I'll show you in just a moment that there are some dedicated health education spaces to be used by both uh, the middle school and the high school. Uh, right now, we currently teach health education in what was a, uh, an auto shop years ago uh, here at the high school. Um, the PE alternative space, that's an area where we would be able to use for uh, wrestling, for gymnastics and also for adapted physical education for those students with some physical needs that may not be able to take what we would consider to be the traditional phys ed. You can also see that there is a distinct uh, locker room area. This happens to be the middle school um, locker area for girls, boys, and showers. Um, and the next slide will show you that a very, again, very separate, very distinct um, locker room facilities, girls, boys, and showers for the high school students. This would be the, I would say, the uh, back entrance or the weekend entrance as you would come, um, students maybe dropped off there, but on the weekend if you were coming to see a game or going to see a play, you would enter the back there. And on your left would be the gymnasium. As you keep walking down Main Street, continuing on your left would be the cafeteria. And on the right would be the library and media center. Over to the far right would be the middle school. And this would be the auditorium, which would be further down on the left. And again, it would be a, a, a really nice place to hold our master's productions. 
And this would be the front area. You can see the middle school entrance right there and the high school entrance right there, but I would remind you that we would continue with the same times. The high school would start as it currently does and the middle school would start later and dismiss later, so they wouldn't be entering and dismissing at the same time. There are, there are many significant gains uh, in this new building, of course, but uh, one area that we are particularly deficient in, uh, in both the middle school and the high school, is science lab facilities. Um, science at the high school is among the most robust programs that we have. And we currently run, this year, in the 2011-2012 school year, 49 sections of science, and we do this in two laboratories. There are two laboratories shared by those 49 sections of science. So uh, the idea that we would uh, be able to not only expand the number of science labs from two to six in the new high school building, but we would also be increasing them significantly in size. Uh, an existing science lab right now on average at the high school is 822 square feet. The new building would have science labs nearly double at 1,440 square feet. And there's a slide a little bit further on that shows you a little, with a little bit more detail uh, what those labs would look like. But I think, again, the Key to, key to the program is the number of labs that we would then have, which, you know, in, in, a, in a very, in a kind of a nutshell, affords our teachers greater opportunity to do hands-on laboratory experiments with our students. Uh, similarly, uh, classrooms, and, and there were many people that joined us on a tour a week ago Saturday of uh, both facilities, the middle school and the high school, and you saw some very undersized classrooms, some, some as small as 634 square feet. Uh, in the new building, uh, classrooms would, would be at 850 square feet. And um, some of you know, some of you are very well aware, and those of us who live in the buildings each and every day know that there are many, many classrooms that are crowded. The superintendent spoke earlier about education having been at one time where the desks were all lined up in nice neat rows and everybody just sat there for the duration of the class and the teacher taught and the student learned and that was the end of it. But education is substantially different nowadays. So the need for collaboration among students is, is very, very great. And we're gonna show you how that space can be used in a classroom that is, is some two, in some cases 200 square feet more than those classrooms that currently exist. The Library Media Center, Mrs. O'Connell spoke about this as a shared core facility. Uh, we are very cognizant as the principals of the middle school and the high school of, of the need to keep students um, appropriately separate um, in the common spaces, library, cafeteria, gymnasium, and auditorium. We, we did an extensive, extensive amount of time, spent an extensive amount of time on the design of the library to make sure that, that equal access to all the opportunities in the library was there for middle school and high school students, but at the same time, the design lends itself very nicely to a middle school student area and a high school student area. And that's the same for the cafeteria and it's the same for the gymnasium space. Um, this is, a, again, a schematic that lays, lays out the, uh, the high school. It is, as I said, it's a three-story building, but coming in off the ground level from that entry plaza that Mrs. O'Connell showed you just a moment ago where there was a separate high school entrance, you actually walk in on this level one. There is a lower level that's exposed uh, because the, the building is built into a hill, so it's exposed on the, on, on the side, uh, and then there is an upper level. Um, key to uh, this main level is this large red space here. This is what we're calling a long distance learning lab. This is a large seminar room that will accommodate um, approximately 130 people. Um, there's an auditorium style seating like we're in right now on the first level, but when you come in off the main level, there would actually be a, a balcony on three sides of that space with approximately 50 seats in it. And we would use this for gathering students from both the middle school and the high school, bringing in an entire team of middle school students in one uh, sitting. We would be able to take um, pods of high school classes and bring them together, interdisciplinary work from the high school and the middle school into this space without bringing them into a very large auditorium and at the same time not having to squeeze them into a much smaller space. This space is uh, retrofitted with all kinds of up-to-date technology that would allow us to speak to, um, to people in other states and, and virtually in other countries as educational needs dictate. Um, similar to the schematic of the middle school floor plan, the blue sp spaces are all classrooms, the pink spaces are for uh, special education services, tech labs here, long distance learning lab here, um, just a, you know, some very, very exciting uses. The, the large green spaces 
are the six science labs. You can see two on each of the three levels. A typical 21st century classroom. Um, what am I being told to speed up a little bit? I'm sorry. Okay, I'll go faster. So here's a typical classroom point. This is a typical classroom on the outside wall, common adjoining corridor. This is a teacher collaboration space where the spaces are designed in a flexible way so that they have many, many uses to them. And teachers will, will have kind of a central collaboration area. And out in this area, we're very excited about a student collaboration area. Uh, right now, when we, when we engage students in collaborative ways, we're often finding spaces in hallways, stairwells, uh, sometimes the students sit out at a table here in the lobby. Um, no longer would that be the case. A couple of classes could come out here, collaborate with each other. Students from a, cl a particular class could break out, come back to their class. Some very, very flexible and exciting spaces. Typical science lab, again, you remember these are about 1,440 square feet, very large, aside for lecture, aside for lab. Um, and again, there, were, there are six science labs going into this proposed new high school, as opposed to the two that we are very limited in their use right now. And I'm done. So our, our next speaker is Mr. Bacor, am I correct? Under the MSBA rules, 
Yeah. Some, of the, some of the project costs, <laughs> such as 